But uh, thank you, Andy. Thank you, church, Antioch Church, for allowing me to be here with you guys this morning. Uh, it's a great privilege. And, uh, and of course, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll speak in, in English. That's fine with me. All right. Um, but um, we, uh, we have just a little, a little bit about us. My wife, Sarah, uh, my oldest, Micah, and we have three other ones who are in class, Silas, Isley, and Kyson. All right, so uh, we have been in Mexico for about eight years. Uh, we were there for, uh, in Pachuca, Mexico for about two years, helped a, a church plant uh, there in Pachuca, Mexico, and we've recently gone to Querétaro, Mexico, uh, and we've been there for about five years. And so uh, thank you guys. You guys have supported us, and I just wanted to take this time to say thank you guys for your prayers and thank you for your support. Um, and if you have your English Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 17. And I would like to share just a little bit about, uh, uh, about the Word of God here. Um, and, and I believe that this is, uh, this is one of my favorite passages, John chapter 17, because it's so simple. I'm a simple guy, all right? And I like, I like systems. I like, uh, you know, step one, two, three. And uh, once I get to one, I can go to two and then to three, and then I accomplish my mission, right? Uh, to me, that, it, it helps me out to know these things. And so I believe John chapter 17 is that for, uh, for me. I hope that is for you. Um, the, uh, I think last, last December, uh, we got a, in the pandemic and everything, the kids were driving us bonkers uh, in the house, just a lot of energy. So we got... Uh, trampoline, right? Have any of you guys got a trampoline? Oh, uh, we, I started setting this trampoline up. It was for Christmas, so Santa was setting it up, and, and it, so it took Santa from 10 at night till like 3 in the morning. Um, <laughs> because there's so much stuff, right? You take the instructions out, and it's like a whole book, and there's like hundreds of springs, all right? And it's just crazy, you know, uh, me as a guy, just go off the picture that's on the box, right? And so it's all torcido. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> now I got my translator here. Um, it's all messed up, and uh, I have to take all the springs off and do it like the instructions tell you, you know. Uh, but then, so it's just a lot of instructions. Well, then we bought this projector screen. Um, and it came with a, just a little piece of paper, just a little piece of paper like this that said, hang it on the wall. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Those are the instructions that I like. Uh, and I believe John chapter 17, if you guys are, are with me here in John chapter 17, is that for us as Christians, what is our goal as, as Christians now, I just want to read here uh, the first five verses um, because it, it gives us what, what the goal of Jesus Christ was. His, his entire goal as he came to this earth and he lived his, uh, his, his life here on this earth, his ministry with his, his disciples and everything, he gives us his goal, uh, his overall uh, goal that he wanted to accomplish here in John chapter 17, it says, Jesus spoke these things, and he looked up to heaven and he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you gave him authority over all flesh, so that he may give eternal life to everyone you have given him. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and the one you have sent. In Jesus Christ, I have glorified you on this earth by completing the work you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence uh, with that glory I had with you before the world existed. So here Jesus is saying, my, my ultimate goal as I came to this earth was to glorify the Father. The Christian's goal, our goal as Christians, as followers of Christ, disciples of Jesus Christ is to glorify the Father. Everything that we do, everything that we say, whether we are in school and we are studying, it is to glorify God. Whether we are at our work, uh, with our, uh, all our work 
uh, partners and, and everything. It is to glorify God, to be the salt and the light in those places where we work. If we go to Walmart, if we go to Target, if we go to these places to buy things in the market or whatever, our goal, our underlying goal in everything that we do and say is to glorify the Father, right? Jesus mentions uh, glorify five times just here in these first five verses of John chapter 17. Now, whenever the Bible repeats words, right, it's important that we pay attention. So here Jesus' underlying goal, his, his ultimate goal is to glorify the Father. Now, me as a Christian, that is what I want to do, right? That is, that is my desire. That is my longing that my life, my purpose in this world would be to glorify the Father. And I believe that each one of you would say the same thing. That is my, my purpose. That is my underlying goal in everything that I do is to glorify the Father, right? Um, and so Jesus is, is saying, uh, is saying his, his goal is to glorify the Father. And then, you know, thinking about that, if that is to be my goal, and to think of all the things that Jesus did, right? Jesus, uh, he did some incredible things, right? He, he was a great preacher. Uh, he could preach the, you know, we read in Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, just an incredible sermon. He went around all of, all of Galilee, all of Jerusalem, all of uh, Israel, uh, even to other countries, and he's preaching this sermon. And he just did an incredible job. I mean, Jesus is an incredible preacher. I'm not as good as Jesus, so uh, I'm not as good as many pastors and <laughs> preachers. So Jesus glorified the Father by preaching. Uh, he also glorified Jesus, uh, God by, by doing some incredible uh, healings, right? You know, one of my favorite stories is in Mark, whenever Jesus heals the paralytic. And, and these four friends, they're carrying the paralytic, and they drop him down in uh, in the room, you know, and I'm, I'm seeing Jesus. He's, he's preaching, right? This incredible sermon he's preaching. And these guys are uncovering the, the, the hole in the wall. And I can imagine how big of a distraction that is. But Jesus being an incredible preacher, everybody is, is just listening to what he's saying. And then they drop him down. And Jesus, what does he say to the paralytic? So your sins are forgiven, Right? Wow, incredible. And so then the people begin to murmur, right? They're saying, well, psh, this guy, who does he think he is that he can forgive sin? Only God can forgive sin, right? And Jesus says, yes, I am God, right? And, and he heals them. What is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or to get up and walk, right? So he says, but so that you know the authority that I have here on earth and that I am God, take up your bed and walk. And he does it. And it's incredible, and he glorifies God in doing those things. And then, as we just sang with uh, Lazarus, that's another favorite story, right? And, and he, he just says, Lazarus, come forth. And you don't hear, I can't, I'm dead. <laughs> he, he walks out. And everybody is just, <laughs> who is this guy? He has some incredible authority. And he's glorifying God in doing all of these things. And that is our purpose, right? Now, if my purpose, if, if the way I am to glorify God is by being an incredible preacher, oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Are you in trouble, Andy? <laughs> We're all in trouble. If, if, if I'm to glorify the Father by being an incredible preacher, guys, I'm in trouble. If I'm to glorify God by being able to heal people, I'm in trouble. I can't do it. Uh, if I am to glorify God by by commanding people to, to come back from the dead, to have that type of authority and power, guys, I'm sorry, I'm in trouble. If that's what I have to do to glorify God, I'm in trouble. What about you guys? Can you guys do any of that? No? Then you know what? We're, if, if we're banking on that to glorify God, well, we're in trouble. But, and so then what do we do? What do we do? How does... How does Jesus glorify God here in John chapter 17? You know what? He doesn't mention not one of those things. 
He doesn't, he doesn't say, God, I glorified you by preaching uh, an incredible sermon up there on the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> on that mount, I, I, I delivered a perfect sermon, and that's how I glorified you. He didn't say, God, I glorified you by, by telling Lazarus to uh, come forth and, and him coming back from the dead. He didn't say that. What does he do then? Because if, if we could find out here in John chapter 17 what he did to glorify God, that's what I want to find out. That's what I want to do, right? And, and look, he says, uh, he says, this is eternal life, okay, that you may that they may know you, the only true God, and the one you have sent. And so this is his, his goal is that uh, to deliver this eternal life, this message, this gospel uh, to the people uh, in, in all the world. And I have glorified you on, on the earth by completing the work you have given me to do. Oh, wow. All right, so we're about to find out. This work that he completed that glorified God, what is it? I want to know. Do you guys want to know so that we can glorify God? Now, we know that Jesus, he died on the cross, and he paid for our sin, and that's how we are, uh, we are uh, able to enter into this eternal life with him because he has paid for all of our sin. He has died in our place where we were supposed to die. He died. And it's only in him transferring our faith from ourselves to him that we have eternal life. So we know that he completed that work, but here he hasn't died yet. So there's, there's another work, right, that he has, he has completed that has glorified God. What is it? It's not preaching. It's not healing. It's not miracles. What is it? You know, 48 times just in this verse, in, in chapter 17 of John, he mentions the men, the people, them, they, 48 times, 48 times he mentions the people that he, what? That he discipled. <laughs> 48 times he mentions the people that he discipled. And, and so uh, what is our mission? If our goal is to glorify God, our mission is to make disciples. It's that easy. Not everybody can preach. Not everybody can heal. Not everybody can, uh, can do miracles. But you know what? Each and every one of you can make a disciple, right? So what are we to do to glorify God? We're to make a disciple. Make disciples. That's what he says. Dedicate your life to making a disciple. And look what he says here in, in verse 6. I have revealed your name to the people you gave me from the world. They were yours. You gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. Because I have given them the words you gave me. They have received them and have known for certain that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. So he makes these disciples. <laughs> he makes 12. One falls away. He's got 11. And he, cha now, he changes the world <laughs> with these 11 men. The, we're here today in, in Georgetown. And we're here in church. And we are reading God's word, and we are uh, wanting to glorify him and make disciples because he made 11 disciples 2,000 years ago. That's an incredible plan. I would have never came up with that plan. You know, I had a friend I went to, college, went to high school with, and he had said, you know, if, if, if Jesus, if God really wanted everybody to know that that, that in him is eternal life, then why didn't he just like appear to every, every person? Just appear individually to every person and say, this is the plan. <laughs> this is how you were saved. From that generation and all the generations to come, that he would just appear to people just individually. But you know what? He, he did, but through his plan to make 11 disciples and to send them out into the world, and to tell them to make more disciples and them to make more disciples so that for generations to come, we would see people made disciples and the gospel uh, delivered to, uh, to everybody. And so he says, make disciples. Your mission in glorifying the Father is to make disciples. And so we, we have come here and we, uh, we, we make disciples. I remember 
Uh, you know, one of the things that whenever I was early in my ministry was, was struggling with that, well, who am I supposed to make a disciple of, you know? And maybe that's your question right now. Well, who is it, you know, in my life? I, I, I got a lot of people in my life, but who, who is it that I should make a disciple of? Who is it that I should share my life with and, and teach them, uh, reveal the word of God to them? That's what Jesus said. He just, he just lived with these 12 guys. He just uh, showed them what God was saying. He, he showed them what God taught him, and, and he taught them and, and, and taught them how to teach other people. That's it. It's, not, it's, it's difficult to make a disciple, but it's actually pretty simple just to live and, and to teach what God has taught us, right? And the Great Commission, he tells us uh, to go. Just when you go, when you go out, what? Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and teach them all that I have commanded you, right? Just live the Bible in front of them. Teach them how to study the Bible, how to pray. Teach them how to give. Teach them how to, uh, how to serve. Teach them how to lead. He said, I did that with the, these 11. And you guys go out and you guys make your own disciples. They can make disciples, right? John, or 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, that's, what, that's what that is. And so... We began to pray. Uh, I, I was praying as we as we went to as uh, I ministered here, and then as we went to Mexico. Well, who's my who's my disciple? You know what? We had to keep our eyes open, right? Uh, remember one time we we went to uh, after church, uh, we went to a, a vegan fest. Um, I would have, guys. I'm, I have nothing against vegans, but I would have never gone to a vegan fest. Um, and so we went to this vegan fest, and we're, we're getting some uh, information and just meeting new people because when you go to a new city, you, just, you don't know anybody, and so you start to, uh, to go out of your comfort zone to meet new people. And we went there, and we, we, we met these, this couple. And they came to our house, and, and they fixed us a meal and all kinds of stuff, and we just made a, 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 an incredible relationship with them, a friendship. And you know what? They... They sat there in our house. They heard the gospel. They got saved. They got baptized. And now they are they're part of our church. Uh, we, we were able to disciple them, teach them the word of God. And you know what? Whenever we were coming up uh, this, uh, this time, we were about to the border, and, and they send us a message, and they're just real excited. Hey, <laughs> Tommy, guess what? Hey, we're, we're going to start a Bible study in our house. You know, they had always come to our house, and we'd have Bible study, and we'd teach them and everything. And but now they're, they're getting it. And, and this is the, the third generation of disciples. You know, they're, they're saying, we're, we're going to start one in our house. We, we've, we, we feel comfortable enough to make disciples ourselves. And, and that's incredible. That, that gives me so much joy to see that they are, are, are catching it. And, and so we, our mission is to make a disciple. Our goal is is what our underlying goal is to glorify the Father. How do we do that? What is the best way that we can do that? It's not by being an excellent preacher. It's not by healing people. It's not by doing any of that because if it were, we would be all in trouble. It is to make a disciple, and each one of us can do that, right? Men, make a disciple of your, your uh, younger, the younger men in the church. Women, older women, make a disciple of the younger women here in the church. And then uh, if, you, if you still can't find a disciple, you know what? Parents, our disciples we make are our children. They're given to us. There's no question, you know. I love, I love the, the simplicity of that, you know. Uh, we don't have to question, oh, where's my disciple? Where do I start? Your kids. They're there. They're watching you. They want to learn, right? And so we teach our, our kids we teach, uh, we begin to disciple them, and then we go on from there. God gives us a disciple, right? And then the, the, the last thing here that I want to mention is, is that the Christian's vision is to reach the world. Our vision is big. It's not, it's not small, right? Jesus' vision as he, he came to this world was to reach the nations. Uh, look here in, in verse 20 and 21. I pray not only for these all right, these, these 11 disciples uh, that I have that, that, that you have given me, Father, but also for those who believe in me through their word, all right? May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe 
you sent me so that the world may believe. That is our vision. And it's, it starts with our goal. Our goal is to glorify God. And then we get the mission, right? We begin to disciple. Uh, if, it's, if it's our kids, we disciple our kids. And then the people in the church who, who want to be discipled, maybe, maybe someone will come to you and say, would you disciple me? If you're that person, I challenge you. If you, have a, if you feel like you've never been discipled and you would like to be discipled, come up to someone like Andy or Stephen or someone and say, I, I need a disciple. I need to be discipled so that I can disciple others, so that I can complete this mission that God has given me. And then we, we catch this vision, this Jesus-sized vision to reach the world. I've, I've been privileged to live in Mexico for eight years to, uh, to reach the, the people there in Querétaro, Mexico. And, and God has, has truly shown us that uh, that he is is working um, in the world that he has given this vision he's given it to each and every one of you and that as you go God will God will show you who to to share the gospel with he will give you disciples and he is his heart is to reach the nations right we have to infiltrate the world I like that word as Christians you know we we often hear I often heard this. And people who are working and um, are, are in school, you know, and, and I want to I wanna say this just before uh, I, I say what I'm about to say. If, if we are tempted to fall, and, and there are things that, that we cannot handle that, that uh, our friends are doing and coworkers, then we should. We should get out of that area. We should not put ourselves in an area where we're tempted, all right? We have to flee from that, right? But you know what? The Bible says that we as, as mature Christians are to infiltrate the world. We're to go into it and to, to share, to be the, the light and the salt of this world. And so we go uh, like into war, sharing the gospel with people who have no idea if they were to die today, they would go to heaven. That's the most important question that we must answer for ourselves and that we must ask to this world. If you were to die today, would you go to heaven? Are we sure? You know, I get to speak to a lot of people and share our testimony. And you know what? A lot, the majority of the people, and not just in Mexico, everywhere, say, you know what? I don't know. I'll just have to wait until I get there <laughs> and find out what God says. You know what? The Bible says that's way too late. It's too late if we're waiting to find out what God says to us when after, after we die. You know why? Because he's already told us. He's already told us in this, if we believe in him, we have eternal life. So that's our message as we go out is, do you know for sure? If you were to die today, you'd go to heaven. Because I do. I have that hope, and I want to share it with you, right? We live completely different, right? We, when we know, when we have that hope, our goal is to glorify God, our mission to make disciples, our vision to reach the world, right, as a Christian. Um, I remember one day we had just moved to Querétaro. And I was walking, I was, I was taking the kids to school. And we're just, the school was right there, we're just walking. And these ladies, in Mexico, there's, um, everybody has on their, on their houses just big gates, all right? So you, so you open the gates, you put your car in, and you shut the gate, right? Everything's kind of shut off, you know? You don't want to leave your car outside. It could be dangerous. So I was walking, this, this, this large gate was just like hanging. <laughs> and there's three girls like hold, trying to hold it up. Like, oh my goodness, you know. So I run over there. I'm like, whoa. So I'm, I'm helping them. It's a big iron gate. And, and so we were able to open it up so they can get their car out. And then we kind of closed it up as, as much as we could because it was falling off and, and kind of wire it shut. I thought, man, that's crazy that that would fall. And, and so I kind of, you know, said, God bless you and, and went my way. You know what? About a month later, I was, I was walking across the street, and a lady, 
she started honking at me. I thought, oh, man, she, you know, she's mad at me because I, I, I walked in front of her or something like that. She's going to yell at me and, and, and stuff. And, but she says, hey, you're the guy who helped us with that gate, right? It's like, hey, would you, would you mind helping me with, with my daughter? Her daughter had been in an accident, and, and, and she was hurt, couldn't pick her up and, and put her in the wheelchair. And so I ran over there and, and, and helped her. And they're like, you know what? We, I, I don't know if you know of a, of a Christian church that we could go to. <laughs> I do. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> I'm a pastor, and we're planning a church here, and we have a Bible study Mondays in our house. You guys are welcome to come. They came. We were able to share the gospel with them. This is, the, I would have never thought that that would have happened. But that's a vision that God has for us. That's a vision that God has to reach the world. If we are glorifying God in what we do and what we say, and we are making disciples, and there's, there's incredible things in store for us. There's an incredible vision that if we, if we get on it, we'll be able to, to, to see amazing things. Step one, two, three, glorify God, make disciples, and have our vision to reach the world. I don't know where you're at today. If you've answered that question, I, if I were to die today, I know that I would be with God. That's awesome. But if you're not, if you haven't answered that most important question in your life, now's the time. Today's the day. We had a lady in our church from Columbia. I had talked with her, and she had, she had confirmed her testimony with me that she had, uh, she had put her trust in Christ she came to Sunday uh, service with us. And when she left, she pulled out in front of a bus. And it's sad. And it was real sad calling up her parents in Columbia saying, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but your daughter's passed away. But there was a hope, there was a, a joy that I could tell them. According to the, the testimony that your daughter told me in our church, I can tell you that she is in heaven. She made a decision to put her trust in Christ. We're not promised today or tomorrow, but have you answered that question in your life? If I were to die today, I'd go to heaven. And then maybe you've, you've answered that. What about a disciple? Do you have a disciple? Are you discipling someone today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for the privilege to be here, to hear your word. And Father, we, um, we ask, Lord, that if there is one here that uh, has not answered that question in their life, if I were to die today, do I know where I would be? Father, that they would answer that in their personal life. Father, that they would transfer their faith from themselves or from other people or traditions or rituals or whatever to solely you, Father. And Father, if there are ones that are, are saying, I'm on board, I wanna, I wanna begin to disciple someone, may you reveal those disciples that you've placed in their life to them. Or maybe there's one here that, that would say, you know, I, I don't feel like I've been discipled properly. May you give them courage to come to one of the pastors here in the church and say, I wish to be discipled, that I might fulfill the mission God has given me to do to make disciples. In Jesus' name, amen.